Hello and welcome to The Beat, a news and talk program brought to you by the Center for Community Media at Worcester State University. I'm your host, Liam Carmody, and today we'll be interviewing Karen Henderson, General Manager at Westboro TV. Karen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so when did you acquire your current position at Westboro TV and what led you to become interested in the field of community media? Um, okay, so I started at Westboro TV about eight years ago and um, I have a background in uh, different kinds of communication. Um, like my career along the way has included training and um, some communications at an HR and benefits consulting firm that I worked with. And I ended up on the cable negotiating committee in my town. And I'd always been a big fan of Westboro TV. And um, at some point while I was on that negotiating committee and working closely with um, the people at Westboro TV in the town, the position for general manager became available and I applied and was hired in. Nice. All right, so what is the mission now of Westboro TV and what services does it provide to the community? So we are a community service organization that um, goes out and uh, captures, creates, and delivers broadcast media. Um, okay. That is, we like to say, um, by, about, and for uh, the Westboro residents and um, businesses and all that are in Westboro. And um, we have three main pieces of what we do, and maybe you've heard of this before in local access, but they also refer to that as PEG, which is public education and government. So we cover things in the public sphere. We cover um, a lot that goes on uh, in education in town, whether it's uh, fine arts, um, sports, things that are happening at the schools, and then for government, that's um, all the government meetings that happen in town. Um, a good number of them we record and broadcast out, um, which is really, actually, that's probably the most critical service um, because, I mean, I think that the um, whole transparency in government is um, really important. Yeah, and yeah. so for us to be there and capture uh, those meetings um, so that the townspeople can see them, voters can see them. And even the way the various committees interact and have to work with each other, various boards, it's really good for them to be able to see each other's meetings. So we capture all those and we archive those and that's a really critical component. Um, and I mean, in addition to the public and education side. Yeah, I mean, the people obviously have to know what's going on government-wise, so right. record the meetings. Right. So as general manager, what are some of your favorite aspects of your position? Um, so I, I love this question because I love my job um, and I have to pick some favorites. I love the interaction with the community. I mean, it really right. is, um, in our town, Westboro TV has become a real hub of the community and I get to interact with, you know, I just went through public education government, so the people that are on boards and committees in my town, um, all of our public officials, a lot of the people at the schools and then residents in town who are interested in media and um, interested in some of what we put out there. So I love that aspect. I love connecting with people. And I love that Westboro TV helps connect people in our town. It kind of creates community. Um, and the other piece, and I, um, piece that I really love is connecting with students. Yeah. Uh, we work with uh, the journalism students at Westboro High School. They come down, we're only about half a mile away from the high school, so they come down. There's probably about 15 of them at my studio right now doing some work. Nice. Um, we also always um, have an Assabet co-op student from Assabet Valley oh, nice. uh, Technical High School, and um, that's actually where Holly Van Wee uh, joined uh, us. I, I know Holly, she's uh, awesome. Great, oh, she's fantastic. And she joined us back when she was an Assabet um, co-op student for us and those students come throughout the year we usually have two and they're with us every other week throughout the year and I love having those students around um, and helping to mentor them in the area of communications and give them a lot of exposure to uh, design and visual communications through Westboro TV so the, the student work to me um, is pretty special we actually have a, a group of Assabet students coming to the studio on Friday who will take over the studio and we'll do some things with them to run through a show, maybe you know, similar to this, um, just to give them that hands-on experience. 
yeah, some hands-on experience is always great for if you want to like go out in the field and stuff, right? Right, absolutely. In a, in a really safe environment, you know, I mean, it's, it's local access. Um, you know, we have small studio shoots. It's, it's nothing where they can make a mistake. It's a good yeah, spot yeah. for them to, well, they can make mistakes, which is good. They can learn from those, um, but in a safe place where it's okay if they make a mistake and they can learn from it. Love that. Awesome. What have been some of the most successful programs that have aired at the station and what factors would you say have led to their success? Right, so I guess, Liam, when I saw this question, I thought kind of it, success is interesting, interesting word, um, because how do you define that, right? So true, true. we could in media and video say, well, success is if you got the most views. So whatever gets the most views must be your most successful video. Yeah. And I don't really think that's always true. We have, um, if we look at, at success defined as most views, things like graduation, you know, we'll have thousands of views on. Um, uh, we have done some government meetings, town meeting for instance, lots of views. We've yeah. done a couple of smaller videos um, that aren't event focused that we've gotten a lot of views on. Um, but I don't think that always defines a successful show. Now, I like to say that some of the videos that we put out there are really important to a lot of people. So some of the ones I just listed. Yeah. And some are really important to just a few people, but to those people, they'd say those are a big success. Yeah. So it's just kind of interesting when we're trying to gauge how we're doing. I feel like we need a good mix of those. You know, you need some videos that, um, you know, we've done videos, for instance, I'll give you an example, in our town, um, capturing some history. So, okay. like a My Westboro story. Oh, okay. Where we would have an interviewer talking with someone who's lived in town for a long time and reflecting back and capturing that history. And I definitely feel as if, you know, um, in one case we had someone who passed away oh, and sorry. we were able to give that video of that interview with them to their family and they showed it when the family came up for the funeral and it was such a nice thing for that family to have so near and dear and special to them so you know again i would i would describe that as a really successful video yeah that would be for a us. very powerful moment right um, so one of the goals of Westboro TV is to encourage the community to participate in creating public media and so how do your team how sorry how does your team effectively encourage this throughout the community Right, so different stations, different local access stations handle that in different ways. And um, honestly, I think we could probably be better with it. So some stations operate very much where uh, community, community media professionals, um, I'm sorry, community media producers, not professionals, yeah. they come in trying to become professionals perhaps, yeah. but with ideas for shows and they take over. They take over the studio, they do all the editing, you know, they truly own the project and the people at the local access station just assist them here or there. We don't usually operate that way. We have people who are kind of community producers, but we do a lot of um, working with them, but a lot of the editing, we usually control the studio. Um, so we have a sports show we do, for instance, and the gentleman, um, Paul McGraw, it's called On the Sidelines, it's a great show, nice. and he will come in and he brings photos and you know some B-roll video clips maybe from a game, and, and we go through all of that, but we have people on staff who will actually pull all that together and when he comes into studio with his guest you know we're on camera we're in the control room so i think we could actually do a better job it's great that he comes in and does that but we really take most of the control i think we probably could do a better job of getting people more hands-on experience in the studio we usually save that for our students but i think we could reach out to the community more and do more of that oh yeah i mean like every aspect of life there's always room for improvement right so. right yeah all right, so you've been recognized for numerous awards over the years, including your most recent, the Good Scout Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you describe that award and some specific uh, projects or programs that um, led to this recognition for you? Um, sure. So the Good Scout Award was, was um, I was really honored to receive that. Actually, the event for that was last night. Oh, and, nice. um, and Holly, who works here with you guys, um, mm -hmm. actually recorded that for me. So thank you to Holly. Thanks, Holly. Um, appreciate that. 
Um, and that's an award that's given to um, a, a community member who has demonstrated uh, some of the characteristics of uh, scouting that they teach um, scouts, including community service and service to others. And so I think in my role with local access, certainly it's given me an opportunity, like I said, to work with so many people in the community. So I'm, I'm somewhat well known for that. And yeah. um, I think again, through Westboro TV, kind of that ability to connect the community um, and, and make good things happen in our town. So in addition to some of the other things that I've done um, in my personal life, um, and committees and boards and things that I've done combined with the Westboro TV allowed me to win that award. Um, but I think uh, a couple other things that we have gotten awards for, some of the videos that we've created, and I am going to mention Holly again. I know she will be embarrassed, but, <laughs> um, but Holly actually um, was key in a couple of the videos that we've been um, nominated as finalists for at the state level uh, for Mass Access Creator Awards. Um, and Holly actually won an award for a documentary that she put together on scouting in Westboro. Happens to go along with that Good Scout. Yeah. Um, but a couple of years ago when they couldn't have that Good Scout event, um, that group tapped into us and asked us to create a little mini documentary highlighting scouting you know, over the past um, 20 years, kind of a history of it in Westboro. And Holly was instrumental in pulling that together and we won an award at the state level for that. Very proud. Awesome. Shout out to you, Holly. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So new media is drastically changing how cable operates. And how is community television being affected by these changes? And how has Westboro TV worked to find solutions? Right. So we all know fewer people watch kind of traditional cable. Yeah. Um, it's going more to like streaming and whatnot. Absolutely. And certainly your generation yeah. Um, has has moved quickly in that direction. I don't oh, know yeah. if they ever started with cable. Um, Personally, I have. You have. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so good. So keep that cable. No. So this is this is the thing. Uh, local access is funded by cable revenues. That is oh. where our funding comes from. Okay. So there are agreements with towns to have cable in their town. So many towns have Charter or Verizon in their town. In order for them to come in, they make an agreement with the town that they're going to give a small percentage of their revenues to be used for local access. Hmm. So we get paid on a subscriber basis. So every time someone cuts the cord, as it were, we get a little bit less okay. uh, revenue. So we are on this kind of slow decline because there are fewer and fewer cable viewers and that's how we get our funding. So a couple things. One is to keep us relevant, we've had to make sure we're streaming our content. So we do go out um, onto YouTube with most of our content. We do a lot of things live. So we do that both to um, online as well as on our cable stations. Yeah. Um, so we've had, to, we've had to do that, but we're not getting any revenue on the streaming side. So there are a couple things. One is at the state level, there are some bills to say that the streaming companies, just like the cable companies, would give a small percentage of their revenue to local access. Okay. So just to keep it even, so we're trying to push that at the state level. Um, I've been involved in trying to make that happen, letter writing campaigns, but it, it's really critical because if that revenue disappears, that's how local access is funded and I mean, local access would disappear. And yeah. I, I happen to think it's pretty critical, especially with, with that, yeah. especially with the number of newspapers, local newspapers on the decline. You yeah. know, there's really, how do you get that local news? How do you get yeah. that local information? And we're kind of right now a main source for that. Yeah. So I'm really hoping at the state level that one of those streaming bills will go through. Again, if your revenue, cable revenue is decreasing, if you can just, just have it stay flat. We're not looking to make a lot of money with that. It would just be, all right, well, if you cut the cord and instead you're streaming, you'd get that revenue to kind of keep it, yeah. um, keep, keep that revenue coming in. Yeah. So many of the volunteers and students working on behalf of the center here are interested in working in television. What advice or tips uh, do you have for them to get started in the field? Right. So I would definitely encourage them to just get as much practice as you can. Get practice in front of the camera, get practice behind the camera. Um, I think we went to a Celtics game at one point and um, 
uh, they had journalists, journalism students at the Celtics game talking about what they look for when they're bringing in camera operators. And one of the things they said is they want people who have been doing this forever. And they're talking about since you were in high school, since you were in college, because that's really how you learn. You can, you can go to class and you can learn technique, but really the experience and the hands-on experience makes the biggest difference. So I would say to, to get out there and do that, doing things like participating in this at, at Worcester State. Um, you know, go ahead and local access is always looking for people to come in. And so I love when people come to me, you know, I'll have students who come in and um, have a passion or something they're interested in. I'm happy to give them opportunities in any of those areas. They wanna be on camera and filming games for me, great. If they want to be doing editing, great. So I think tapping into your local access and seeing if you can do some work for them, either on an internship basis or a lot of them are always looking for help. Um, I think that experience makes the biggest difference. Nice. All right, so how can our audiences find the content that Westboro TV puts out? Right, so because most of your audience won't be in Westboro, we're on TV in Westboro, we're on Verizon yeah. and Charter, we have channels, but um, of course we have an online presence. Um, we're at westborotv.org. And we also have our YouTube channel, which is just Westboro TV. All right, awesome. Is, uh, before we wrap up, is there anything else you want to share with uh, our audience? Um, so I would, one last thing, I would just encourage, one of the things I talk to students about when they come in the studio is how important it is to be able to tell a good story. And oh, I yeah. think that's so much of what we do in video and so much of what you do, no matter what your career ends up being, right? Whether you're a real estate agent or you're a um, software engineer and you have to describe a new feature, it really, you have to, you don't have to just be writing articles as a journalist to tell a good story. Lots of those careers require you to get up and tell a story that's interesting and brings your viewers and listeners in. And I see that with video. That's really what we get to do with video. You get to use music, you get to use video, you get to use um, images, graphics, you get to bring words on the screen, you can do voiceovers. So there's just so many ways to add to that story. And I think for me, that's really what creating videos is all about and um, using that creativity to come up with a good story. So I think I would just say to your communications group to try to consider that when you're creating your videos, you know, what's your story and how are you gonna build that? Very well said. All right, Karen, thank you so much for all the information and advice. Uh, I'll be sure to check out Westboro TV sometime soon. Yeah. Liam, it was great to meet you. Thanks for having me, really appreciate it. Thank you for watching this episode of The Beat. Please remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We'll see you next time.